Our meeting is bilingual, Spanish and English. I want to introduce our interpreters, Weber and Anna. Please come off mute and say hello. Eh, nuestra reunión será eh, en español y en inglés bilingüe. Entonces, primero queremos eh, presentar a nuestros intérpretes. Eh, Ana, saluda, por favor. Buenas noches. Ana Santoyo eh, de Put People First in Pennsylvania. Good evening. My name is Ana Santoyo. I'm with Put People First in PA. También nos va a acompañar Weber. And Weber is also here. No sé si ya llegó, Weber. Okay, Weber's on his way from work. Um, let me ask one more thing in Spanish, Brittany, about the naming. Una pregunta. ¿Hay alguien que esté, vaya a usar español? Eh, si por favor puede encender su micrófono para marcar el nombre adecuadamente y así ayudar con interpretación. Si alguien va a usar la interpretación al español, pueden por favor encender su micrófono y decirnos. Now we'll make our interpretation announcement, first in English, then Spanish. Listen carefully because there are instructions that everyone will have to follow. One second, please. <laughs> windows open. Eh, entonces, ahora vamos a hacer nuestro anuncio de interpretación. Primero será en inglés y luego lo haremos en español. The Wisconsin Poor People's Campaign understands the strategic importance of and is committed to creating multilingual spaces when possible. We are organizing across all lines of division, including language. To that end, we have interpretation in Spanish and English. We ask that all participants speak slowly and clearly. Right after this announcement, we will activate the Zoom interpretation feature. Parts of our meeting will be in English and other parts in Spanish. So everyone, please make sure to follow these instructions. Hello. If you are using Zoom Hello. on your computer, you will see a globe icon at the bottom of your screen. Click on the globe and select your preferred language. If you are using Zoom from your phone, click the three dots where it says more, choose language, interpretation, and select your preferred language. If you have any problems doing this, please comment on the chat so that one of our members can assist you. Thank you. Ahora vamos a hacer el anuncio en español. Nuestra campaña, la campaña de la gente pobre, entiende la importancia estratégica y tiene la firme determinación de crear un espacio multilingüe y de unirnos a través del lenguaje. Con este fin, tenemos interpretación en español y en inglés. Les pedimos a los participantes que hablen lentamente y de forma clara. Cuando terminemos este anuncio, activaremos la función de interpretación de Zoom. Y si está usando Zoom en su computadora, podrá ver un icono de mundo en la parte de abajo de su pantalla. Haga clic y seleccione el lenguaje de su preferencia. Si está usando Zoom desde su teléfono, haga clic en los tres puntitos donde dice More o Más. Seleccione Language Interpretation o Interpretación de Idiomas y luego su lenguaje. Si tiene algún problema, por favor ponga un comentario en el chat y le ayudaremos. Gracias. All right. Um, let me test them one second. Ana, puedes hablar? Tienes el micrófono apagado. Te escucho perfecto en español. Sí, probemos en inglés ahora. Puedes pasar al canal de inglés, por favor. Yes, I am in English now. Hello. Perfect. Okay, I think we are ready for interpretation purposes. Thank you. All right, thank you, Natalia. Thank you to our interpreters and tech team and a special welcome to anyone who is new to the Poor People's Campaign. If this is your first meeting with us, we are glad you are here and we're eager to know, get to know you and learn what brought you to the campaign. My name is Brittany, I live in Wausau. I'm one of the tri-chairs for the Wisconsin Poor People's Campaign and I'm a member of our coordinating committee. 
I'll be emceeing the meeting tonight, along with my friend, another, another leader of the Poor People's Campaign, Sarah, who will be leading the panel discussion. On Saturday, January 15th, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who spent the final years of his life building the original Poor People's Campaign, would have turned 93. He actually spent his last living birthday in 1968 in a Poor People's Campaign meeting. As we remember and celebrate Dr. King together this evening, we will be focusing on the importance of uniting with other individuals, groups, and organizations and building strong, lasting, meaningful relationships with one another. While we each may focus on different issues, they are all intertwined. And the key to breaking down walls and crossing lines of division is coming out of our silos and connecting the dots between our struggles. This is not just a poor people's campaign fight. We are in all in this together. And as we say often in the PPC, we need many, 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 many Martins. Tonight, we will begin with an invocation and land recognition by Reverend Bell. Then we'll take a little time to get to know each other, followed by our panel discussion. And finally, learn about the different ways you can get involved with the PPC. Now, I will pass it over to Reverend Bell. Hello, everyone. Allow me to acknowledge the land in which we live on has been stolen for selfish gain, racism, and ignorance led from hatred. We call this land the land of the free. Not so when we talk about being free, that's for everyone in the United States. Our citizenship should not be determined by a group of the elites that think that they are better than others. That's not, that don't have the same color of skin. God created us all equal to be a one people. We can never stop the plan of God. God is love. No matter what, love still stands. This one scripture that comes to mind says, love thy neighbor as a love thyself. Allow me to start the invocation by saying, I thank God and you all for giving me a chance to speak for us all. And for those that are heavily affected by the system that has been called to serve, but instead has been set in place to destroy. We are here today in place of our forefathers to fight against hatred, racism, and poverty and selfish gain. We are as a people to never allow another human being to be mistreated by injustice. Everyone that God has created has a right to be treated fairly. It's for us never to stand back and watch our communities be destroyed by being oppressed and having mental illness from the traumas that are caused by our society. Nor should we stand back and allow our communities to continue to be enslaved by the system that has been set in place. I've heard we need to fix our system. This system we're under is working the way it's been set in place. To work, it is our more duty to change what's been set in place through unity of us all. It has been too many to count that has lost their lives from trying to change this system we should never give up this fight. If we do, all that have been killed would be in vain. My brothers and my sisters, let's not lose hope during these times. We have God on our side who can be against us. Thank you so much, Reverend Bell. You're welcome. <clears throat> In 1968, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many others called for a revolution of values in America. As they shifted from civil rights to economic justice and human rights, they sought to build a broad fusion movement that could unite poor and impacted folks from all backgrounds across the country. And through nonviolent direct action, they hoped to focus the nation's attention on economic inequality and poverty. Today, the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, has picked up this unfinished work. 
In 45 states across the country, people are coming together to confront the interlocking injustices of systemic racism, poverty, the denial of healthcare, ecological devastation, militarism, and the distorted moral narrative of religious nationalism. Whether it was the PPC of Dr. King's time or that of ours, being clear, competent, committed, and connected leaders, not just within the campaign, but in our relationships with each other, serves as the soul of this movement. Now we're going to take a few minutes to get those building blocks started by getting to know each other a little bit better. We'll break out into random groups of three for about six minutes. Um, in those groups, please share a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, what, you, what drew you to the PPC, um, if you're an active member, what your um, role is within the campaign. Nicole will get the breakout room set up and we will see you all back here shortly and move into the panel discussion. Un, un anuncio corto, quiero preguntar de nuevo, ¿hay alguien usando interpretación al español? ¿Puede encender su micrófono? Ok, creo que está bien. No estamos seguros, debemos igual a seguir haciendo la interpretación, porque a veces... Perfecto, se escuchaba perfecto. Sí, sí. Te entiendo. Perfecto. A ti, Ana, mil gracias. Lo estás haciendo súper bien. Thank you, Ana. Sorry, Nicole, question. Should I join the breakout room that I was assigned? I just want to make sure. Yes, they are ready, I believe. Okay, so I just want to stay a little bit until the end just to make sure folks language wise are everything is okay. How do I break out into the room? I don't see a invite anything. Are you on uh, phone or computer? Phone. Does it have the same option with the three dots? Yep. Well, um, I have the three dots. I can raise my hand. I can chat. Let me see if we see. can invite her. There it is. There it is. Did it show up? Oh, good. Okay, I'll join my group. If anything, just you could pull me, Nicole, if any kind of language thing comes, comes up, you could take me out. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So if anybody is having problems joining the, the breakout room that they were assigned to, there should be three dots on the screen, whether you're on a computer or on a phone. If you click that, there'll be an option for breakout rooms. Then just make sure interpretation, are we good to continue? Can we make a short announcement again for how to sign up just since those folks, some folks, do you want to do or do you want me to do it, Sadis? Um, do you want me to do English, you do Spanish? Uh, well, it's been, oh yeah, oh, it's right. yes. No, no, but okay. if people haven't joined yes. it. So yeah, why do you do English and I do Spanish? Okay, <laughs> Vamos so a just... anunciar otra vez interpretación. Okay, so uh, we just want to remind you, especially because we are going to have people presenting in both English and in Spanish that unless you speak both of those languages, you should click on the globe that's at the bottom of your screen um, to select a uh, either English or Spanish as your language that you want to hear the audio in. We're very grateful to have um, interpreters helping us tonight to make a, a, a multilingual space. Um, if you're on a cell phone, you need to 
click on the three dots and uh, click, is it language? And then choose the language that you would like to hear in. We'll make this announcement now in Spanish as well. Para las personas que llegaron mientras estábamos en las salas, vamos a usar interpretación simultánea. Entonces, también van a haber presentaciones en los dos idiomas. Así que todas las personas deben escoger un idioma para escuchar. Eh, si estás en computador, hay un globo en la parte baja. Dale clic y selecciona el idioma de tu preferencia. Si estás en tu celular, en la pantalla, haz clic y salen tres puntitos verticales en la mano derecha arriba. Haz clic, eh, sale más y luego interpretación y selecciona el idioma de tu preferencia. Si tienes problemas con interpretación, por favor, escríbenos un mensaje en el chat. All right, we're going to start, um, we're going to kick off our panel discussion tonight that we are very excited um, to, to hear from folks around the state. Um, I'm going to see actually if, Nicole, do you mind putting the, awesome. Um, uh, first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Sarah. Uh, I am on the coordinating committee of the Wisconsin Poor People's Campaign, and I live in, uh, in Milwaukee. And I'm going to help moderate the, our panel tonight. Um, this panel, uh, as you can see from the title, is about uh, is in honor of Martin Luther King Day, uh, and we're going to talk about that a bit more in a moment. But we're talking about picking up the torch um, from the original campaign, and we're going to be hearing from people who who are doing that work to um, to continue. Um, the fight for our, our, uh, our, our basic human rights. So we're gonna be joined tonight by Audrey Taylor from the Fight for 15, Sylvester Jackson from Expo, Ex-Incarcerated People Organizing, Maricela Aguilar from Vecinos Unidos, and Tom Killian from Citizens for a Clean Wausau. So folks from all around the state um, who, like I said, are, are doing this work and we're doing it together with the Poor People's Campaign. And I wanted to start us off just a little bit of framing with this, this picture of um, Martin Luther King, um, and Martin Luther King Jr. As, as we know, this holiday celebrates, um, celebrates his birthday. And we wanna ground ourselves in the work that he started many decades ago um, and take note also though of the historic moment that we're in. So you can see he's holding this Poor People's Campaign 1968 poster. That's the year that he was assassinated. And, um, and also that the Poor People's Campaign was launched along with uh, poor and low income people from across the country, particularly led by, um, by the National Welfare Rights Organization, um, a group of powerful women and mothers who were fighting for their rights uh, and fighting to end systemic poverty, racism, and militarism. And when we think about 1968 um, and what was happening then, I think it's important for us to think about, um, you know, in that moment, could we have imagined what we would be seeing right now? Um, could we, uh, could, could we have, a, could King have imagined that instead of 40 million poor people, we would have 140 million people being poor and low income in the wealthiest country in the world as we do now, including 2 million people here in Wisconsin. What would he think that uh, uh, about a nation that two years into a devastating global pandemic has made no meaningful expansion of our healthcare system that already had left thousands of people out of care. What would he think about, about what we're seeing to, like, in, in these days as far as the rollback on, uh, and, and restrictions on voting rights that are, are coming in waves across the country? What would he think about the refusal to pass even a basic minimum wage for $15 when we know that even that is not enough and refusal to pass something like the Build Back Better bill that is only even a first step towards what our communities need. And we can go to the next one. And the last thing that we wanted to do before we start the panel is just to share this quote. We, look at, we, we turn to this quote very often in the Poor People's Campaign. It says, the dispossessed of this nation, the poor, both white and Negro, live in a cruelly unjust society. They must organize a revolution against the injustice, not against the lives of the fellow persons who are their fellow citizens, but against the structures 
through which the society is refusing to take means which have been called for and which are at hand to lift the load of poverty. There are millions of poor people in this country who have little, very little or even nothing to lose. If they can be helped to take action together, I'm gonna to say that again, if they can be helped to take action together, they will do so with a freedom and power that will be a new and unsettling force in our complacent national life. And so that's what this panel is really about, is about the ways that we are, are helping our people take action together so that we can be that new and unsettling force today in 2022. So we're excited to hear now from uh, from our panelists about what that work looks like today. So I'll give us a minute to, to get spotlighted so we can see them and they can introduce themselves. So we're gonna welcome Ms. Audrey Taylor from the Fight for 15, <laughs> as well as uh, Maricela Aguilar from Vecinos Unidos. Getting that on there. Sylvester Jackson from Expo, Ex Incarcerated People Organizing. And Tom Killian, who's from Citizens for a Clean Wausau. And the first question that we're going to, we're just going to first start out by letting our panelists go ahead and, and introduce themselves and introduce their work. Um, tell us a little bit about how people in your organization are impacted by and fighting to uproot the interlocking injustices that we, we name, which are systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation, militarism and the war economy, and um, the distorted moral narrative of religious nationalism. So we're gonna go ahead and start with Ms. Audrey. Please go ahead and kick us off. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Audrey Taylor. I am a current oh, worker uh, at I'm the Wendy. I'm sorry, Audrey. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, es que tenemos dos intérpretes, entonces solo quiero asegurar que uh, cuando hable Audrey y cuando hable Marisela le interpreta Ana, y cuando hable Sylvester y cuando hable Tom le interpreta Weber, y también a Sara Weber. Está bien, intérpretes, muchísimas gracias. Y Weber, sí, sí, tranquilas. Eh, Weber interpreta para Sara, Sylvester, Sylvester y Tom. Gracias, Ati. We're ready. Gracias. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself, Ms. Audrey. Thank you. My name is Audrey Taylor. First of all, good evening. I am so happy to be here on Martin Luther King Day with everyone. And I thank you, Sarah, for inviting me to be on the panel along with Sierra and Marquise, who are or is a part of the Fight for 15. Um, I am a current worker at the Wendy's um, out in Wauwatosa. I have been with the Fight for 15 since 2017. And it is a great organization to be in. I come to love those people very dearly. Um, what we do in the Fight for 15 is that when a coworker is in distress, we call on Sierra or either, or either Marquise and we go to that particular restaurant, be it Wendy's, McDonald's, and nine times out of 10, it's mostly a McDonald's that we have to go and put them on blast. So I don't know how far you want me to go into this, Sarah, but, um, it, it, it's just great. Martin Luther King, he stood for a lot of things. And and today I wish, kind of wish he was still here. And then I don't because it seemed like everything he stood for back then by going to jail for us, getting water sprayed on them, going to jail for us. It seemed like our young people just don't get it. They don't get it. He fought for our rights to be able to be in this, in this, and he tried to make our world a little bit better by helping the poor people. And I appreciate you all so much for the PPC. 
And I, I, I thank God that you all are still working and striving to make the PPC a whole lot better. And we just need more people to participate, come out and learn what all these different organizations are about. We are about helping one another. We standing for one another. And we can't stand alone. We need everyone to come and stand with us. One voice is not gonna get it. Two voices is not gonna get it. When we are a thousand or a million strong, we, we have to be heard and we shall be heard. So I don't know how far you want me to go into this because I ain't got on the roll and I could talk, 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 <laughs> but I know we have a um, limited time. So I just want to thank the PPC for inviting me to be on the panel tonight. So do you want me to go into well, that, um, some of That's a perfect introduction. And then we'll let everybody introduce themselves and, okay. and we'll come back to you for the next question. Thank you. Michelle. All right. Thank you, darling. Maricela, will you share? Please. Yes. So, hola, um, buenas tardes a todos. Yo soy Maricela. Um, soy una de las miembros de Vecinos Unidos. Hello, everyone. My name is Maricela. I'm with neighbors in Milwaukee. I'm a teacher. Sorry, Mari, can you slow down a little bit? Thank you so much. You're good. Uh, give me one sec to allow um, Ana to catch up. Are you ready, Ana? Let me know. When you're ready, Ana, let me know. I'm ready. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Gracias. I'm also a teacher of English in Milwaukee, public schools. Speaking of what Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King has left behind, his legacy, helping our neighbors to have relaciones fuertes para and create relationships, strong relationships, to be to be very clear about our lives, to be honest about our lives. And that we shouldn't be embarrassed. We shouldn't hide. This is happening to all of us. And together we can have these conversations. We are currently in that process of having those conversations and being honest with each other. We're very patient with each other to better understand the systems that are behind these injustices. We need to we need to tear down these lies that take us apart, that tear us apart to create relationships and come together and understand the injustices and the inequality, the poverty that affects all of us. And I'm super excited to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Maricela. Tom, will you introduce yourself, please? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Tom Killian, uh, Wausau, Wisconsin. Thank you for inviting me this evening. And uh, I'm part of Citizens for a Clean Wausau. And it started off on the southwest side of Wausau, a hotbed of environmental challenges dealing with uh, environmental issues like industrial contamination and pollution. And there was a trinity of polluters here for decades. And for example, uh, 3M Company, which started here in 1929, that's the oldest operating 3M factory in the entire world. And you're dealing also with entities like uh, the former Crestline property, now Wallico, and the former Connor Forest 
Forest Industries property, uh, a former company of Gordon Connor. And I think from what I'm hearing tonight, uh, there is a common thread. And when we deal with environmental issues, what we're often dealing with is an external ramification that started internally with systems and uh, platforms that, that had rotted from the inside. And these are inequities of, of systems and our government, uh, such inequities with regulatory standards, laws. And, and so the problems that began in our governments and our courts and these inequities ultimately manifested as external problems. And we see at the beginning of the video tonight, the right to live. And really, there's no more basic and profound right than, than the right to live. Everyone has a right to life and longevity. And I think that's really what's at stake with environmental health activism. So it's, it's as much about protecting ourselves as protecting our environment. And I've just like I've heard tonight, you know, like different languages, but a common struggle. So idiomas diferentes, pero una lucha común. So I think uh, we're all fighting the same struggle in, in different ways. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And Sylvester, will you go ahead and introduce yourself as well, please, and tell us a little bit about Expo. Uh, yes, my name is Sylvester Jackson. I'm the lead organizer of the Milwaukee chapter of Expo. Uh, Expo is a statewide organization that was founded and created and, and now ran and operated by individuals formerly incarcerated, which is what the title of Expo is, Ex-Incarcerated People Organizing. Uh, right now, what we're doing in our community is educating the people, um, standing up, challenging legislators, changing policy, fighting for prison reform, fighting for equality. Um, our main campaigns right now are locked up on the outside and um, unlock the vote. Unlock the vote is a critical campaign that Expo is fighting because individuals like myself and others who have done time in the state of Wisconsin, when they come home, they're not allowed to vote. Although we are forced to pay taxes, you know, we don't have that choice. We are forced to pay taxes uh, from everything, from what we buy to coming out of our checks. And when you look at the fact that this here is a country that broke away from Britain in its early stages of existence because they was not getting representation from the crown. And they even went so far as calling it tyranny. And yet, and today we have our politicians sitting in their position and allowing this thing to be done to a segment of people in uh, this country. And it includes people like myself who are directly impacted by the criminal, uh, I won't even say criminal justice system, uh, because there's nothing just about the way uh, this country runs the uh, incarceration thing that they do here. Um, Expo um, is advocating for changes on many fronts. Our campaign locked up on the outside is to educate the community just because a person go to prison and that's called the gated community. When we come home into the real community, we're still confined because we're still under certain laws and rules and things that restrict us from really being free. You know, And so we wanna educate the community because at the end of the day, I look at Brother King as um, a person that was a general for a lot of people, including myself, uh, that had a chance. He had a chance to walk away. He was warned that if he continued to fight for change, they would kill him. He could have packed this stuff up and took his family and went on somewhere in silence, but he did not. Knowing that he could die, he sacrificed. He willingly took that opportunity to sacrifice himself for the betterment of us. And so we asked, what have you left behind? He left behind people like myself and all those who are like-minded like me, who would not sit back and allow his dream to be diminished by doing nothing. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next, thank you all for introducing yourselves and telling us a little bit about what's going on. Um, in your fronts of struggle where you're organizing and about, um, about the organizations that you represent. 
I want to know that we want to know next a little bit about what are the interconnections, you know, um, sometimes we kind of separate out the environmental movements over here and you know we're fighting around. Um, around the criminal injustice system over there and wages is over here, but I want to know from you all who are living it and experiencing it and in the fight, what are the, what are the interconnections? What do you see as the ways that your fights are connected to each other? And I think we're going to go in the same order. So you all can just, uh, I won't jump in. I'll just let you, you know, when one goes, the next can go. So Ms. Audrey, do you want to start us off? What do you see as, as the connections between the fight for 15 and what we're hearing from everyone? What I'm hearing is that the fight. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. Can I can I interrupt this time? I'm sorry if it's not Sarah is me interrupting. Sorry, Miss Audrey. Uh, I'm gonna make an, an announcement in Spanish with, to our interpreters. Um, disculpen, Ana y Weber. Quería proponer una una propuesta. Mil gracias a ambos, Ana y Weber, por su gran trabajo. Estaría bien, um, Weber, si cambiamos para que tú le interpretes a Marisela. Y Ana le interprete a Sylvester. Ana me dijo que sí está bien por teléfono. Hablé con ella. ¿Para ti está bien, Weber? Entonces, tú le haces a Marisela al inglés y a Sylvester. Perfecto. No, eh, ah, perdón, perdón. Ana, Sylvester y Audrey. Y tú a Tom, Marisela y Sara. Tú, Weber. Perfecto. Ok, we're good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Miss Audrey. I will promise to try not to interrupt you again. <laughs> That's okay. I forgot you have to speak the Spanish so they'll know what's going on. My apologies. <clears throat> what I think that the Fight for 15 is doing is, in a way, everything that Martin Luther King stood for and tried to do, the Fight for 15 is also there. We're trying to raise, help raise minimum wages um, to $15 an hour. And like Sarah said, that's still not enough. Um, we also fighting for a union as well. So we put those two things together. We're praying and hoping that it will all work out in the end or before the end. And the Fight for 15 is a great organization. I myself, like I said, I've been with them since 2017. And we we have a great bunch of people. When Sarah call or Marquis call, if we can be there, we're there. And my job, I have a crazy hours. I work from 11 a.m. to 4. And sometimes things are happening around 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, I can't make that. But they do know within my heart and in my mind, I'm there with them, even though I'm not there in the flesh. But being a part of the Fight for 15 is a very great organization. And I have seen poor people, um, people from the Poor People Campaign that has came out and stood in solidarity with us. Um, when we had the, 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 the fight, the march, I should say, and we had people to sit down in the middle of the street, knowing that they can go to jail. But we had someone there to back them up. We had their back. And the poor people was there with us on that day. Mr. Frank, he was there. And he's part of the PPC. And I, I commend him for always being when he could be there to help out the fight for 15. And if there's anything that I can do to help with the PPC, Sarah, you have my phone number. Just give me a call. Awesome. And um, I'm just going to go a little off script here because Sierra from the Fight for 15 was raising her hand and saying that she wants to add something. So I'm going to let her jump in here as, um, as another leader in the Fight for 15. So jump on. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much, Audrey. <laughs> I appreciate you, Sierra. Um, so I just want to say that um, we're all struggling. Poor People's Campaign, Expo, we're all a part of the struggle. We are fighting to create change across the nation. Um, I just want to go off ta ta um, target, still on target, but I just want to say this. We're living through a pandemic. So my struggle is your struggle. 
Your struggle is my struggle. His struggle, her struggle, we're all struggle. We are try we are all struggling. We are trying to create the change to make it better for our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. Um, so we're all connected in this fight. And you know, united we stand, separately we fall. But at this rate, we'll all be falling if we don't stand together. So thank you again, Audrey. I appreciate you, Sarah. Thank you, Sierra, for jumping in and we'll keep passing it to, to hear about the interconnections that we see. Sí, um, exactamente lo que dijo Sierra, que exactly what Sierra was saying. All of us are, even though we're from different communities, we are confronting the same struggles that are represented here. When I when I listen to Audrey, I think about my mom, who's who's been working in the factory for 25 years, and has and has never had uh, social security. And uh, when I when I see Sylvester, I think about my own struggles. Like myself, I've never been able to vote in in this country, even though I've lived here for my entire life. And there's no hope that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be able to vote anytime soon. And when I see Tom, I, I think about the same fact that in, in my community and we don't know if our pipes have lead. We, so maybe some struggles look a little bit different, but all of the people in our communities confront these issues every day. And what Sierra was saying and and what Reverend Bell was saying at the beginning of, of our session is it's really important to recognize that, that we're trying to struggle for a change, but not a change that's particular for one of our individual fights, but a complete change that, that is systemic and we need to, and it's, it's, it's something that's happened before. And so it's gonna happen again. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you, Marisela. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, and uh, from what I'm hearing from my uh, counterparts on, on the panel is that uh, there is a common theme and uh, multiple common themes. And, and I think all of these issues that we're speaking to, they, they deal with an economy or an ecosystem of injustice. And unfortunately, it is not that the system is not working. The problem at hand is that the system is working as it was intended to work. And that is the most tragic, uh, problematic component of all. And we must realize if, if that is the problem with the machine, then it takes systemic change if there are systemic problems. And I think that uh, whether we're talking about environmental issues or compensation or other elements, I think we must realize that the solution lies in something that was discussed uh, toward the beginning of the meeting, and it's the two words, action together. And the greatest parlor trick that's been uh, thrust upon the people uh, in our country and across the globe is that regular people do not hold the power. And that is patently false. And so I think we must not partake in this uh, myth of division. It is not the right versus the left. It is not Republicans versus Democrats. It is regular people versus the ruling class. And that often takes the form of common people versus the corporate state. So we can, you know, the problems that we're facing with people are indivisible with prioritizing profit over people. And I think that's a commonality we face and that regular people acting together, that is not just strong, it is inevitably victorious. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. And Sylvester, do you have, do you want to add anything on this question about interconnections? Uh, yeah, well, you know, regarding the fight for 15, uh, I think what ties everyone here together with that is that uh, being born 
with rights to be treated as human beings, to be treated with respect and allowed to live a life, you know, that is reasonable, you know, according to what it is that we uh, go out and seek as career. But the thing is, it's said twice now with Minister, uh, with Reverend Bell and, and with my counterpart here around this theory about something being broken. We spend too much time on trying to fix something that was created to do what it's doing. Uh, something like this doesn't need fixing, it needs dismantling and rebuilt, restructured for stability and sustainable change. Uh, we all have something to come. When you look at uh, the ghetto, the community, the poverty stricken places all over this country, this country wealth comes from poor people. Poor people were forced as slaves, indigenous people, you name it, to build the wealth of those one percent of that use this wealth and deny us our rights. And for them to give themselves raises when they're making 80,000, 100,000, you know, and yet they feel individual can make it all seven some uh, uh, an hour, it just shows you the arrogance, you know, uh, of the Sorry, people. Sylvester, I'm so sorry. Could you pause mm -hmm. for one second? Can you give me yes, one second for our Spanish interpreter to catch up? One second. Yes, um, Anna, You're fine. Anna, let me know when you're ready. Okay. Great, we are ready. Thank you. You're doing awesome, Anna. You're doing awesome, Sylvester. Thank you both. You're welcome. I can continue. All right, great. So pretty much when I look at uh, what we all have in common, we have one thing in common that is a desire to change what we see to be um, corruption, greed, uh, power structure for the wrong reason by the people that get elected to represent us, but represent themselves. So uh, Expo and, and, and other organizations around this country um, need to realize we got to do things out of silos, come together in unity. One thing we learn as organizers that it's the number game. When you take a lot of people, create a lot of wealth, you can make a lot of changes. And we have to do that in a fourth, because when one speak, they're heard, but they can be easily ignored. When multiple people speak, they're heard, and it's hard to be ignored. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And uh, you're already all beginning to answer our next question. Um, so I'm gonna put it out there and kind of put it out there actually as the last question together too. Um, we wanna know, you know, why, why are you part of the poor people's campaign? We're so happy that everybody is part of the poor people's campaign, but we know, you know, there's, there's a million coalitions to join and, um, and, and to be a part of, why do you feel that, that being a part of the poor people's campaign in this moment, um, is something that is important for your organization and, um, for your communities. And in particular, if you're able to speak to, um, you know, if people haven't heard yet, here's the big announcement. Here's a big announcement, but hopefully you've heard already, and or, and you will be hearing more that um, the Poor People's Campaign, along with um, many many different uh, uh, people and organizations and um, networks from across the country, are planning a a, a historic generational uh, mass poor people's and low wage workers assembly and moral march on Washington for June 18th, 2022. We'll hear more about that soon. Um, but my question to, to you all is both, why are you a part of the Poor People's Campaign? And why is it important for you to be there, to be in Washington, DC, you, but also you as an organizer and a leader of an entire community and an entire base of people? Um, why are you, um, you know, gonna stand together with, with so many of us um, on June 18th to take that stand? Um, uh, you know, in this moment, why is that important in this moment for us to, to make that statement? And I'll let anybody want to kick that off. I would. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Well, I, myself, I'm a part of the Poor People Campaign because uh, let's look at it financially, we're poor. 
<laughs> you know, in a rich country. And then um, you look at um, what I was just speaking on, the fact that you can be a part of something bigger than yourself to add on to that, to hopefully push for the changes that would affect where you're living and where you lay your hand is what I long for because I fought individually in prison and won several rounds. But the fights I'm fighting out in the community with a multiple people, I'm making much more noise and gaining much more ground. So I believe uh, going to New York, going to Washington DC, I'm sorry, going to Washington DC and masses, it's just like when we, when we uh, do our um, Madison Action Day down here from uh, Milwaukee and around the state and we go to Madison, we go down there 700 or something strong, people are gonna listen to you. So the more people shows up on the steps of those people who stood by and allowed this insurrection and are now trying to justify it, they can't deny thousands of people just walking on there in real peace and harmony for change. Now, if they can accept the fact that thousands upon tens of thousands stormed the Capitol to force the suppression of democracy, and now they're trying to protect them, we got to let them know that we're not knocking either. We're banging on the door for change ourselves. And we can do that. The more we are, the stronger we are, the better our chances of getting change. Thank you so much, Sylvester. I'm glad you'll be with us on June 18th. And uh, along with, with all of our um, folks from Expo. Who, um, anybody God's wanna? Willing. Yes, hello. this is Frank. Hello? Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, the reason I've returned, I was on a sabbatical, but- Welcome back. <laughs> I see too much abuse in government. Yes. I see you know, too much abuse in corporate. Audrey Taylor and, and many other people that know me know that I have been handcuffed in both Madison, Wisconsin, you know, here in Milwaukee, no big deal. Um, but if I don't get up and fight, how can I expect someone else to come up behind me and, and take up the fight? You know, and you, like- Frank. And even with like, I'm gonna to our, you know, yes, yes, we're, we're joined by folks from Voces tonight and I'm going to pass it back to our panelists to just wrap up and then we're actually going to have some time to talk in breakout groups as well. So, so please, uh, Maricela or Tom or Audrey, Sierra, if anybody wants to, to add in on this last question, please do. I think for me, the reason that's most important is because like, like it's been said here, we all have our own struggles that might be a little bit smaller, but the category of, of poor person or of working person is the largest category that we have in our country. And there's a connection, there's a relationship with that for all of us. There's people with a lot of money in this country that control a lot of things. And we are the, the opposite force to that, the opposing force to that. So we have to unite ourselves. I think all of us here, when we speak about our ideas, uh, we're all in agreement. I see that a lot of people are nodding and, and I see that we have lots of, of shared ideas and shared analysis and we understand that working people and poor people, uh, that's our biggest connection, that the most fundamental connection that unites us. Okay, I'll, I'll, um, so I am a part of the Poor People's Campaign because um, it is a great organization to be a part of. It was started by Martin Luther King. Um, the Wisconsin team, Sarah, Natalia, um, everyone, Bruce, oh my God, awesome, awesome, awesome. But the energy, um, every meeting that we have, um, we ended with, a, we started with a song, sometimes a prayer, we end with a song, sometimes a prayer. Um, it's just unified and it's bringing other organizations um, 
different people of all walks of life together and the unity is strong and with us being united we're going to be able to move forward and change the nation and i really feel that way um i really really feel that way and that's why i'm a part of it and i think that the world needs it because again everyone from all walks of life is a part of, is a part of it and there's no judgment there um felon no felon degree college degree no degree we're all here from one cause and that's to better the, the world the nation um and the 18th, because I want to make some noise, that's why. <laughs> Come on now, Tom, you got something to okay. say, let's uh, go. Well, um, you called me out, so I'm going to do it, Ciara. So uh, just uh, as my counterparts uh, have said, like Sylvester and Maricela mentioned, uh, you know, there's strength in, in numbers. And uh, I think it, it takes a village. And I'll tell you, when more than 300 million Americans are regular folks like ours, and we're dealing with less than 1%, that very much quantitatively foreshadows the outcome, and it will every time. So when the numbers are that imbalanced, uh, if I was a betting man, I could tell you uh, how that would turn out. So we must recognize that these are struggles of attrition. It's not going to to uh, you know, be a brief uh, fight. And I think often there's a direct relationship between how profoundly important a struggle is and how long it takes to accomplish it. And so being involved in the, in the Poor People's Campaign, Brittany and Bruce have done a great job here. Uh, it also comes down to me uh, about something else that was mentioned, representation. And I think often putting your hopes uh, in a politician, uh, you'd be more it'd be more worthwhile to put those hopes in, in a wastebasket. We, we must represent ourselves. And until we do so, there, there will not be victory. And on the environmental front, we can see this in Wisconsin. Look at our governors. Look at uh, Lee Dreyfus versus Tony Earle. I'll tell you a commonality, different parties, both sold out their people. All right. So Tony Earle was the secretary of the DNR, became governor, and then became a lobbyist for polluters. If that's not a cautionary tale about how you can't put your eggs into the politician basket, I don't know what is. So I think together, action together, uh, you know, the numbers and unity we will find uh, is of paramount importance. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Ms. Audrey, did you want to, I see you came off mute. You want to add anything before we wrap it up? I just want to say that I cannot wait for June 18th because we're going to go there and we're going to say Washington on fire. Yes, that's right. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to close out our panel with um, something that we say in the Poor People's Campaign and that we really mean and that we see, we, we can see that we mean it just by looking and hearing our panelists right here, which is that we say we're going forward together. And what is it, panelists? Not, Not one step. One. That's right. Go ahead, Sierra. <laughs> forward together. Not one step Not back. One step back. Step, not thank one step you. back. <laughs> All right. Thank you, panelists, so much. And I'm going to pass it back to Brittany for the, the rest of our meeting. Thank you, Sarah. And seriously, a huge thank you to all of our amazing panelists tonight. Um, we know how busy everybody is and how much um, you know time, time means to all of us. So we really appreciate you all spending your time with us tonight. Um, we really admire each and every one of you and are just so grateful to have you all to stand alongside in this fight. Um, are we good on time? Do you think we're good on time? Okay, so we are going to break out into random groups again to kind of discuss what we heard during the panel discussion. Um, maybe a little bit about what you're taking away from it, how we can use it to build the movement, maybe talk a little bit about why you're in the Poor People's Campaign or what, you know, again, what interested you in the Poor People's Campaign. Um, Nicole will get those set again and we'll see you all back here shortly. Thank you, Brittany. I will open the rooms.
Weber se nos asignó a una sala, pero podemos descansar. Puedes juntarte o puedes sí. Mil gracias. Yo me voy a juntar para hablar con Ana. Si gustas y la conoces un rato, puedes, pero también si solo quieres desconectarte. Mil gracias. Les está haciendo súper bien los dos. Mil gracias. All right, we're ready for the next portion. Awesome. Well, uh, back at it. Uh, my name is Femi, currently in the Milwaukee area, um, helping out with um, organizing here, along with my brother Kevin and my sister Natalia, um, a member of the Coco team as well, um, and glad to be here with you guys. Um, obviously, we've heard a lot of information I want to just share with you all ways to get involved um, as this is an organization that seeks to mobilize all of us. Um, this is all of our campaigns together. Um, and so no one should be left out. Um, every single face on this Zoom space um, should really know that you have an important part to play. And so first and foremost, we want to make sure that everyone has a big circle around um, June 18th. Um, as we seek to, to really mobilize and to really move um, our force to Washington, D.C. Um, for the Mass Poor People's Campaign and Low Wage Workers Assembly. Um, and so definitely put that in your calendars. You know, you got an Android, you got an Apple iPhone, whatever you got, um, your little old school with your paper calendar, whatever you have. Uh, mark it down June 18, 2022. It's going to be big. Um, and so uh, part of that is within this next six months, we're gonna be working hard to mobilize um, thousands of people from Wisconsin to participate in this historic time. Um, and so if, you're, if you are interested in, in riding a bus with others from your area, um, we are posting a link in the chat um, right now um, to get a ticket. We, we will also email this specific link out as well. So um, be looking out for that. There will be like buses in many areas throughout the state for you to be uh, catch uh, getting on. And so um, we want to make sure everyone has that space to, to come to DC and to make some noise. Um, next thing is, you know, right now, as you know, through all the chat uh, messages in the chats, is we're all aware of the issues of, of the voting rights that's being taken place. Um, the people elected to represent us in, in the US Senate are failing to do what is necessary for our, for our communities, right? And so they are failing to protect our basic right to vote um, in the face of voter disenfranchisement uh, and, and legislations being proposed and passed across the nation. Um, they are failing to raise the minimum wage to even $15 an hour when, when as Sarah said uh, earlier, earlier within our time together, that it should be $25 per hour. Um, they are failing to pass the Build Back Better bill, um, a bill that can really save $2 trillion in the second decade if it's passed. Um, these and many other things um, are reasons why we need to put pressure on people who have the have, have or in are in that position to do so. And so the Poor People's Campaign has been relentless, taking um, nonviolent action in Washington, D.C., um, here in Wisconsin, in the media, uh, in the pulpits, and in the streets. Um, and so in the campaign, we say that our deadline is victory. That, that's our deadline. It, it's simply that. It's victory. And so we know this is gonna be a long fight um, and we need everyone involved. We need everyone um, speaking their minds, lifting their voices, moving their feet and contacting those who need to be contacted. And so um, this week we're calling senators, uh, Senators Manchin, Cinema, McConnell and Schumer every single day to make our demands known. And so we are sharing a link in the chat to sign up to help us make these calls every single day. Um, we can fight and we don't have to accept this rejection of our basic rights. And we hope you will join us in making these calls. Um, the next thing also is local committees. 
Um, our local organizing committees are also meeting in several areas of the state to connect, make plans for outreach for June 18th and beyond, um, and also build the Poor People's Campaign locally. And so the best way to get involved within this space is to join a committee um, so that you have a home base in the campaign to be able to get to know other leaders, stay connected in between statewide meetings and find ways to help. Um, on the screen, we are sharing upcoming meeting dates for organizing committee meetings um, in the Milwaukee area, Dane County, Rock Counties, as well as our North Central PPCI organizing committee meeting, uh, which includes Marathon and surrounding counties. For the Milwaukee County, uh, we'll meet on Saturday, January 29th, 2 to 3.30. Um, you'll need to contact Natalia at that email that's being listed. And then in Rock County, we'll meet, um, sorry about that. On Rock County, we'll meet on Wednesday, February 20, uh, 2nd at seven o'clock. You'll contact Sally. Um, and then in Dane County has two upcoming meetings on Monday, February 14th at noon and Saturday, February 19th at 10.30 um, a.m. And you can contact those email, that email as well. In the North Central area, we'll meet on Thursday, February 17th at seven o'clock and you'll be able to email that listed email. And now we know that there are 72 counties in our state, uh, which means that there's a lot of people, a lot of areas to be mobilized, um, a lot of people to be engaged and to join this campaign. And so within these several states and several areas, um, we wanna continue to organize and build in those areas as well. And so if you live in an area that was not covered by one of of the four existing committees and you are interested in helping organize a local group in your area, we're here to help. Like we want this to happen. And so don't be afraid to reach out to us. Um, please email Wisconsin at Poor People's Campaign um, to let us know and we will get in touch with you all um, to support the startup of that or, um, organizing and connecting um, in that area. And then recruiting for fundraisers and media teams. In addition to our regional groups, we have several statewide teams in the PPC, included moral and faith uh, outreach, a labor committee, an arts and cultural group that is in the process of forming our media and communication team and our fundraising team. We welcome you to find out more, in, um, more if you are interested in any of these but we are especially recruiting new members uh, for our media and communications team and our fundraising team. We need to build our capacity in these areas in the, in the lead up to June 18th and beyond. And so our media and communi communications team is responsible for really spreading the word about events through our email blasts and social media, cultivating those, those much needed relationships within the press, and creating content for us to tell our own stories. And our fundraising team is working on raising funds to support the work of, of, the, of the campaign, um, especially as we hope to support thousands of Wisconsinites to travel to Washington, DC on June 18th and want to ensure that cost is never a barrier. And again, cost is never a barrier. We want everyone to be able to, to make it on that bus. Um, so we are seeking volunteers to help with a t-shirt fundraiser as well as people to plan fundraising events, uh, reach out to organize organizations for support and sign people up as ind individual donors. So you don't need to have any prior experience um, in either of these areas to join the team, just a commitment to work together with other leaders from around the state to really help carry out the goals of the campaign around communications or fundraising. And if you are interested um, in joining the media and communications team, please email to Cole um, at that email listed. And then if you're interested in joining the fundraiser team, please email Peggy at that email listed. Another way to let us know you're interested in any of the above is to fill out our Get Involved uh, form and, some, and someone can um, follow up with you from that. And so we are posting that link for that in the chat now, and we'll also send it over email in the in the next few days. Definitely fill out that get involved form. Um, that's actually how I got involved within the Wisconsin Purpose Campaign. I mean, it, it works y'all. We, we hound you on purpose because this is your campaign. And so we want you to be involved. 
um, save the date for the more tour. Um, you know, that's going to be big uh, March 28th um, as we anticipate to build that base into June 18th. Um, we'll be honored with um, hosting Reverend Bishop William Barber um, and also Dr. Reverend Liz Theo Harris. Um, they'll be coming to Wisconsin for the MORE tour event. Um, MORE stands for, hold on, a time out. Let me put on my hat real quick. Let me uh, put my big old forehead in the screen for you. Mobilizing, organizing, registering, and educating. The location of this event is still to be announced, um, but we are excited to just welcome um, the national team to Wisconsin as this is a national campaign. Um, and so that'll be on March 28th. So please say that date. And uh, you know, that is the end of the announcements, you guys. Uh, I'll pass it back to Brittany to do her thing. Thank you, Femi. Um, yeah, the more tour. We are so excited um, to, to be able to host uh, Reverend Barber and Reverend Theo Harris here in Wisconsin. So now um, what we'll do is just, if anybody has any final announcements or events that they want to um, let everybody know about, please put them in the chat now. Whether it's um, any of your organization meetings, uh, events, or locally, please please feel free to share them. I know, I know I've seen a few um, in the chat. And finally, we are going to pass it over to Rachel Wilson, who is going to um, lead us out with a song and then our final chant. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel. Um, I've recently joined the campaign. Um, I've been going to some of the local Madison meetings and Sarah actually invited me to join um, a song leader training, which I did and I loved it. So now um, I am very happy to that she asked me to, to come and um, share a song to close out the meeting. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. Gracias a todos um, for your inspiring words and all, all for your inspiring work. Um, so the song that um, I wanted to share today, I actually just put it in the chat um, under the Rise Up and Sing link. It's called Somebody's Hurting My Brother. Um, and the original um, composer, all the information is in that link. And I'll just uh, sing a little bit of it. And then it's a call and response. So I'll say somebody's hurting my brother and it's gone on far too long. And basically anytime that there's the far too long part of the song, um, everybody sings that together, but I'll, I'll just sing a little bit of it. And I know Eric is also here and was going to be my demonstration partner for the call and response. So Eric, uh, are you here still? If he's not, that's fine. I can. Uh... Oh, hi, Eric. Hi. <laughs> Great. So um, uh, you can basically um, uh, follow along. Uh, we'll do um, a demonstration and then we can do it all together um, with everyone muting your mics and singing the call and response uh, no, part with us. <laughs> I will start. Um, and then one last thing that I did want to take away, one thing that I took away from the training was uh, that you shouldn't worry about how your voice sounds or if you think you're a good singer or not. It's it's more about all coming together and sharing the meaning of the song. And we become so much more powerful when we sing together. It's, we kind of join another register. Um, we're on a different plane when we're singing together versus when we're you know talking or chanting. Um, I think singing and music has a really special way of elevating the message that we are trying to send. So without further ado, um, me and Eric will give you a little taste of what the song is. Somebody's hurting my brother and it's gone on far 
too long. Yes, it's gonna far too long. Yes, it's gonna long, far too long. Oh, somebody's hurting my brother, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. All righty. Thanks so much, Eric. So should we try it with um, everyone together? Um, I think it might sound a little too loud if people are if take off their mics, but so um, me and Eric will, do you want it? Maybe we could do two, two different, two more rounds. There's other lyrics in the link that I sent. So I will just go through those lyrics. Um, so here we go again. This one is somebody's poisoning our waters. Somebody's poisoning our waters and it's, it's gone, gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone, gone on. on far too long. Oh, it's gone, gone on, on far oh. too long. Oh, somebody's poisoning our waters, and it's gone on far too long. And, and we won't, won't be silent, silent anymore. Okay, one more, and it will be somebody's ignoring the homeless. Somebody's ignoring the homeless, and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Oh, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's ignoring the homeless, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Rachel, are you going to lead our chant? Sure. Or together. Come on. Come on, up. Come on, up. Come on up. Forward. Forward. I think it's correct. So I will say juntos para adelante. And the response is ni un paso atrás. So Juntos para adelante. Ni un paso atrás. Juntos para adelante. Ni un, Ni un paso, un paso atrás. atrás. Good night, everybody. We'll see you soon. Good night. 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 Good night.